Well, praise the Lord, and good evening, and welcome to the Encouraging Word broadcast. And tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about um, patience, and uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you this evening for, for all the blessings that you have blessed us with throughout this whole day. And God, I just pray that your blessings would, uh, your hand would be upon each one that's listening in tonight. Uh, help them, Lord, in their walk with you to uh, be patient in all things. And Lord, I just pray that uh, you would teach us and help us to learn this important lesson tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about patience. And uh, I'm not a doctor, so the patients we're talking about are not people, but you being patient, waiting on God. And so this is important. And uh, we all have to have patience. We all have to, and, and at times your patience um, will be tried in various ways, but it is just because it's tried doesn't mean you're going to fail. Uh, you, can, you can have patience. You can learn to be patient, and these are things that we need to learn as Christians. This is a very important, um, very important characteristic of a, of a Christian uh, to be patient, and we're going to learn a little bit about that tonight. Uh, we've got a couple verses to, to look at. So if you would go ahead and turn in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to go down to verse 14. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 14, and it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Wow. So I mean, look at the look at the content of this this scripture in itself. Um, that we are supposed to warn the unruly people that are acting up, the people that are not uh, being Christ-like in their walk. You know, people that are are doing things that they don't need to be doing, getting riled up and fussing and fighting. We got to warn them that God is not happy with that. That that's not the way that Christians are supposed to behave. But we're we are to be what patient, right? It says comfort the feeble-minded, those that are. You know, not so, uh, you know, not so sure that, you know, there's people out there that are struggling in their walks and, and they're struggling. And you need to come alongside them and comfort them and give them the scripture and let them know that God's got everything. That he's, he's able to help them through whatever it is that they're going through. And he's able to protect them and keep them and strengthen them. Support the weak. You know, again, we're, we're to, to be the, when our brothers and sisters are weak. We need to we need to step up and be there and be strong for them and in our moment of weakness too that our brothers and sisters can come alongside. Now the Lord is there always, obviously, but we also have an obligation as brothers and sisters in Christ to be there to support one another, to help one another. It says to be patient toward all men. Notice it said all men, not not just uh, the ones that are being friendly and nice towards you, but all men. And so being patient, sometimes people are are saying stuff and you just have to be patient in your response you have to think about what you're going to say pray about sometimes what you're going to 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 reply to people amen in second thessalonians there's another um, part of patience that we should take a look at and it's first uh second thessalonians chapter three verse five and it says and the lord direct your hearts into the love of god and into the patient waiting for Christ. So here, you know, prayer is that God would direct our hearts into the love of God. What does it mean to, you know, when you plunge yourself into the love of God, what does that look like? How does that impact others? And, and what what kind of difference can, can you make by just submerging yourself into the love of God? See, this is what it's talking about. Direct your hearts into the love of God. Get into the love of God. What does God command? That we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love our neighbor as ourselves. We need to understand that. We need to get into that. We need to, that needs to be a reality in our lives. We need to be doing that. Amen. And this is a, this is a big deal. We need to do that. And it, what else do we, do we need to do? And into the, into the patient waiting for Christ. See, we need to patiently wait. Some people have got impatient and trying to trying to make things happen. You can't make things happen. God's going to do things in his own timing, right? You just need to be patient waiting for Christ. And patience is not idleness. Patience is is watching, praying, doing those things that God called us to do as we wait for our Lord to return because surely he is going to return. And on that day, what a day 
of rejoicing. It will be. Amen. So, you know, these are two big things. Getting into the love of God and patiently waiting. These are connected. You know, we we cannot be impatient. It cannot be impatient and be walking in the love of God. We're, we're not going to be doing what God wants us to do. We're not supposed to worry and fret. We're supposed to be casting our cares on the Lord because He cares for us. So we walk in the love of God. We are patiently waiting for Christ. We are patient towards all men. You see, you see a theme here in the scriptures? You know, God telling us that what we need to do. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3, you know, in, in a bishop, what does it say? Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre after money, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. See, this is these are the characteristics of a of a pastor, a true pastor. It, it, these are these are it. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. These are things that God wants us to be as pastors, you know, pastor, this is what pastors should be. You know, I, I really pray that some of our modern day pastors that are out there on the, on the television, I pray that these guys uh, get back to the scripture and read this. Get it in their hearts. That's, we're not there for money. We're there for Jesus. We're there for people. We need to reach out with the love of Christ. We need to be patient as we wait on the Lord. Patient with all men. Amen. You know, it, it would do us good to listen to what the scripture says. It would do us good in our lives to walk according to God's word rather than according to the flesh, right? Because you know, walking in the flesh, not a good thing. Look at what it says in, in um, 1 Timothy 6.11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So, you know, what are we supposed to go after? We're supposed to follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. This is what, these are the characteristics that we're supposed to have in our lives. Christians, we need to be manifesting these things in our lives, the fruit of the Spirit, amen? The fruit of the Spirit needs to be, you know, coming out in our lives. And uh, we need to be careful that we're not being impatient with people, but patient. Amen? And in the days to come, as times get more difficult and things happen out there, don't forget patience. Patiently waiting on the Lord and being patient with all men. I pray that you were blessed by this encouraging word tonight. And I pray also that you tune in tomorrow night. We have Bible study, 6 o'clock. Looking forward to it. Exciting. Amen. And uh, pray that as we wait, we're patiently waiting. Amen. Let's patiently wait for the Lord because he surely is coming soon. God bless you. Have a blessed night in Jesus.